Hey everybody, I'm John Hendricks. I'm downstairs here in my basement for another episode of Fossils at Home. Today I'd like to talk with you a little bit about how snail shells coil. Here's another box of fossils that's been sitting around in my basement for a long time. I've been lugging this box all over the country with me as I've moved from place to place. These are some of my favorite specimens. They mean the most to me. This box is labeled Pinecrest Samples. Let's see what's inside. Just open up the box here and see what we've got. Looks like kind of a mess. Got a bunch of Ziploc bags. And inside these bags, looks like there's all kinds of little shells, some bigger than others actually, that are all white in color. There's some really spiny bivalve shells some twisty specimens, some bivalves and snails, all sorts of different kinds of specimens in this, in this box. This is not the ideal way to store fossil specimens, but this is just how I've been carrying these things around. More than anything else, they have sentimental value for me. Let's take a few out and take a closer look. When I was an undergrad, I went on a spring break geology field trip to southern Florida. We went to a quarry near Sarasota where three million year old fossil shells from the pine crest beds were being dug up for material to help make roads in Florida. The fossil shells in the box that I'm sharing with you here were all collected that day. That day changed my life. Before I went to that quarry, I was interested in researching fossil vertebrates, like this mosasaur skull that my friends and I found a year earlier in Kansas. Once I discovered Cenozoic snail shells, vertebrates would no longer do, and I've been researching them for the last 20 years. The species diversity and quality of preservation in the shell beds in southern Florida is incredible. Some of the species in the shell beds are now extinct, while others still survive off the coast of Florida today. Let's return to those fossil snail shells from Sarasota that I laid out earlier. They show a diversity of shapes. Some are tall and skinny with high spires, while some are wide or round. Some are smooth, while others have intricate ornamentation. One of the shells is very different from the others, though. To see why, we need to flip them over. Take a close look at all of the shells. Do you notice something very different about one of them? Did you notice what was different? When held with the spire pointing upwards, the opening of this cone snail shell is on the left. It has sinistral shell coiling. We can compare it with another fossil cone snail, which has its opening on the right. This is called dextral coiling, and it is far more common. In fact, almost all marine snails that have ever lived have dextral coiling. Sinistral, or left-handed coiling, is very rare as a species-level trait, just as left-handedness in humans is much less common than right-handedness. The scientific name of the left-handed cone snail is Conus adversarius. It is a species that is now completely extinct and is only known from the fossil record. Conus adversarius was given its name by Timothy Conrad in 1840. At that time, the adversary was another name for the devil, so this is the adversary cone snail. This poor snail was given this unfortunate name because of the direction of its coil. People used to think that things associated with the left-hand side were wicked. I'm a left-handed person, and I wish that this snail had been given a nicer name. I'll do a video all about cone snails another time, but I'll mention now that they are incredibly diverse. There are hundreds of living species, and hundreds more are known from the fossil record. Conus adversarius is the only one with a sinistral shell, though. All the rest are dextral. Here's a tissue box being sold online. It's covered in cone snail shells, which is typically a good thing. 
but in this case one of the normally dextral species was printed backwards. It's just so wrong. Even though sinistral shell coiling is very rare in marine snails, it just so happens that it evolved independently in whelks at the same time and in the same place as it did in cone snails. Paleontologists still don't know for sure if this was just a coincidence or if there was some sort of common cause. Here's our left-handed whelk. Let's see if we can go find another one. I'm in my backyard here and I think I've seen another one nearby. Let's see what we can find. Oh look, here's my wife's hellivore. It's one of the earliest plants to flower in our garden. Very pretty. What's that behind it? Looks like another whelk shell. It is. It's been sitting out here in our garden for a while. Its opening's on the right hand side. Here's the fossil I showed you earlier. Its opening's on the left hand side. Ours is a sinistral snail. The one that's been sitting out here in the garden for a while is a dextral snail. I think this dextral snail should have a friend. Let's leave the left-handed one out here for it. Snail shells are pretty things to look at, and I bet you might have one or two sitting around your house. Take a closer look at them. Do they have dextral coils with the opening on the right-hand side, or are they sinistral with the opening on the left? Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed learning a little something about how snails coil. I don't think you'll ever look at a snail shell the same way again. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, and remember, science saves lives. See you later.